Good morning. Today is Sunday, May 1st. This is Faith at Home with Pastor, and it's good to have you with us. We had Easter a couple Sundays ago, and uh, we continue through the Easter season. And, uh, and we're actually continuing through the Gospel of John. Uh, you know, we had the Easter message uh, from John's Gospel. And uh, last week we had, uh, you know, with uh, Jesus in the, in the upper room, uh, with the disciples and Thomas and not seeing Thomas and and Thomas doubting, but um, but we're going to kind of continue on with um, you know John chapter chapter twenty one, the last chapter of John, and um, but I want to begin with prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that we have this opportunity uh, to gather together and to study your word. We pray that you could bless us as we continue through the season of of um, Easter to celebrate the resurrection and what that means for each and every one of us. And so, dear Lord, bless us that we truly can live as resurrected children, Lord. We pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it's interesting. Uh, John chapter 10, uh, John, I'm sorry, John chapter 20, that talks about the, the empty tomb, uh, Jesus appearing to Mary Magdalene. Uh, Jesus appearing to the to the disciples in the upper room, minus Thomas, and then with Thomas, and and just interesting, all of that is going on throughout the chapter, uh, chapter twenty, and it kind of concludes as if the gospel is coming to an end. It says Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are recorded that you may have believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. That's kind of how chapter 20 concludes. And you would think it's kind of concluding the the entire gospel, uh, that Jesus did other signs, but these are are, written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. But then all of a sudden, there's almost like an addendum. You know, it's like we're adding this chapter uh, to what we've had previously. And uh, and it's... uh, John chapter 21, where we have the miraculous catch of fish, Jesus re- reinstating Peter. And, um, and kind of, uh, you know, it's like, why, why do we have that? I'm going to talk more about, you know, the significance of that chapter following what has just transpired. Uh, so let me just go ahead and begin. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, read uh, chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathanael from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not recognize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, have, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard uh, and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. You know, it appeared as if the gospel was coming to a close, and then all of a sudden you have chapter 21. And I think there's several significance to that. Of course, it says it was the third time. The first time Jesus appeared, minus Thomas. The second time he appeared to the disciples in the upper room, a week later, with Thomas. 
And now, it's more than a week later, I guess they say this is the third time, and, and they're out fishing, kind of going back to their, their business of, of, uh, of being fishermen. You know, what are we to, to, do, to do now? And Peter says, well, I'm going to go fish. And, uh, but of course, Jesus had something more in store for them. Uh, but they have not been filled with the Holy Spirit yet. They haven't uh, had the day of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Spirit. And so they're going to do with what they normally do, go back to, to their lives before Jesus. Uh, but Jesus appears, and obviously there's, there's more that he wants them to do. But the idea of going fishing, and I think elsewhere Jesus says, I, I will make you fishers of men. You know, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all three of them have what you would call the Great Commission. You know, in Matthew, chapter 28, is the, the Great Commission, as we know, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You know, and Mark kind of talks about going and, and making disciples. Luke, uh, you know, kind of also states that you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You know, all of them talk about the th other three Gospels, that they are go are to go and make disciples. You don't really have a great commission in the Gospel of John. But chapter 21 does talk about going fishing and catching a large number of fish. I think John always has a way of, of bringing forth a spiritual truth in narrative form. And, and, and that's exactly what we're seeing here in chapter 21. You know, rather than telling them to go and make disciples of all nations, telling them to go and, and, and fish. They, they let, out, let down their nets. They had caught a huge number of fish. I don't think it's a coincidence that all of a sudden it stated that there was 153 of them. I'm not exactly sure what that number means, but I think it's significant, 153. I heard somewhere once that there was 153 different kinds of fish. Uh, at least at that time, and so maybe this is an indication that they are to go and make disciples of all nations, all people, different races and, and tribes and groups, and you know, it's like everyone, the whole world is the mission field. You know, 153 different kinds of people, different kinds of fish, you know, I don't know, significance to that. Uh, I heard uh, 100 be the Gentile, 50, uh, you know, being uh, you know, the the remnant, you know, the, the people who believe three is the number for God, one, five, fifty, one hundred fifty three. 153. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, like I said, just kind of heard different uh, ideas concerning that number. But I think, I think it does mean something, maybe something more inclusive uh, that we are to reach out to, to everybody. Um, what we have, I kind of want to make a connection you know, it says that, uh, you know, when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals with fish on it. Uh, I had this circled mainly because of what's to follow. Let me go ahead and read verses 15 through 19. That's the reinstatement of Peter. It said, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lamb. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were young, they dressed yourself and went where you wanted but when you are old, you will stretch out your hand and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Jesus, that Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Of course, Jesus told, asked Peter to follow him three years ago you know, when he began his ministry. Uh, but here, once again, after all that had happened, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. I, I mentioned earlier that I circled the idea that they were you know, burning coals on a fire. 
uh, when Peter and the other disciples landed with the fish. Um, and then that in conjunction with the reinstatement of Peter. Right after Jesus was arrested, Peter was also standing behind, around a, a burning coals with fire on it, uh, warming himself. Uh, when the servant girl asked Peter if he knew Jesus, who had been arrested, uh, the, the Galilean, uh, your accent gives you away. And that's when Peter denied knowing Jesus. I don't know the man. Three times, as Jesus said would happen, that you would deny me three times. Many people, of course, view the reinstatement of Peter is that three times Jesus asked him, do you love me? And I think it's kind of a way of offsetting Jesus, that Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, and now Jesus is asking him three times, do you love me? Uh, yes, Lord. Then feed my lambs, feed my sheep, uh, take care of my, my lamb, uh, feed my sheep. Um, and so it's kind of offsetting, it's really Jesus forgiving Peter for what he had done. You know, and he did that while standing around a fire, warming himself. Um, and now he's around the fire once again uh, with Jesus there. Uh, and, and Jesus took that opportunity to really forgive Peter, to reinstate Peter, to bring him back into the fold. So that he, then he said, go and follow me. So that he would go out and share with others this good news. And who better? And I think that's one thing about uh, what God has done for us. You know, that as we are forgiven, you know, the extent of our sinfulness, but yet God still loves us. Uh, that, that we all have a story to tell. You know, maybe not as dramatic as Peter, but we all have a story to tell on how someone, God has taken someone like me. And, uh, and, and Peter, you know, denied knowing Jesus. You know, Judas betrayed Jesus, and, and he never could understand that forgiveness, and he, and he ended up taking his own life. You know, Peter is really just as guilty, as sinful as Judas was. Uh, but the dif difference is Judas never had faith, never d believed in forgiveness. Never, never, you know, re the process of repentance is the acknowledgement of your sin, going in a new direction, and then believing that you're forgiven. Judas acknowledged the fact that he was sinful. You know, he went back to the chief priests and said, I've betrayed innocent blood. Uh, you could say he even went in a new direction and that he returned the, s the, the money and confessed that I have sinned. But uh, he didn't complete that process of repentance and, and that believing that he was forgiven. Uh, Peter understood that he was sinful, admitted the fact that he was sinful. You see that in the writings of Peter. Uh, certainly went in a new direction. He did follow Jesus. But more than anything else, he completed the process of repentance by believing that, yes, he was forgiven. Jesus reinstated him, feed my sheep, and Peter did, you know, Faith enabled him to be able to do that, to go out and, and to uh, be fishers of, of men. So I see the connection uh, you know, between the, the, the miraculous catch, the reinstatement of Peter, and, and I think this is really the, the, the Great Commission found in the Gospel of John uh, in, in narrative form. And so, get back to the original question of why chapter 21, you know, it ended so neatly, uh, but then we have chapter 21, kind of a reinstatement of Peter, the Great Commission, which leads all of us to, to want to share with others the good news. Uh, and then, uh, then, once again, it kind of winds down after that, and, uh, and once again, it ends. Jesus did many other things, that if everything was written, there would be not, not enough books that could hold all of that. Uh, kind of concludes once again. You know, concluding in chapter 21, 20, but it's like, wait, wait, I got, I got one more thing to share with you. Uh, and then it concludes once again. Uh, and this is really the, the great commission uh, of the Gospel of John. So anyway, with that in mind, I kind of want to close in prayer. Lord, thank you so much. As we think about what you have done with Peter and what you have done with each and every one of us, we've all betrayed you. We've all denied you in, in, in various ways. But dear Lord, we know that you love us, that you have forgiven us, and that you reinstate all of us uh, in faith. 
and also uh, you know, to have us follow you and to share your love with others. Use us as your servants, as your witnesses, that we all can be fishers of men. We pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again. Look forward uh, to seeing you next Sunday. Actually, is Mother's Day, May 8th. So I'll see you then.